Okay, so for today, uh, we're going to have a look at the 10 ACT practice tests from McGraw-Hill. Um, I'm looking at here the second edition. Um, I think they're up to the fifth edition now, but a lot of the questions and the actual tests are the same. So you may have to just uh, shuffle around the test, but uh, we'll start with test one. <coughs> Uh, question one. Shannon walked one and two-thirds miles on Wednesday and two and three-fifths miles on Thursday. What was the total distance in miles Shannon walked during those two days? So we simply have to add these two fractions. So this is simple if you have usage of the calculator, which we do for ACT. So we'll grab our calculator and we'll put in one. And for me, what I do is one plus two-thirds. That's how I get one and two-thirds return that, that equals this, okay, plus two plus three-fifths, and that will give us a total, and then we could do math, fraction, enter, and that gives us 64 over 15, which is not a choice, of course, but then we could do a long division here, so 15 goes into 64, um, 15, 30, 45, 60, so that's four times, and we get a result of remainder of four fifteenths. So four and four fifteenths, answer choice C. Um, while we're on the topic, I'd like to also discuss how to do this without the calculator. Um, just because it's helpful for your own knowledge, but also um, if you're taking the SAT as well, then there is a no calculator section. So it's good to get comfortable with that procedure. Um, so I'll show you a couple of different ways. First of all, <clears throat> we can um, add the, nu the full numbers together to get three, and then we could add the fractions together, two-thirds and three-fifths. Um, so the typical way to do this is to sort of put the denominator of the other one here and here, and then the denominator of the first one here and here, and then sort of multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms, okay, and then you get 19 over 15. But that way is kind of long and boring, so I want to show a little bit faster, better way. Um, so here we're going to do a cross multiplication. So 2 times 5 is 10, and we put the plus symbol. 3 times 3 is 9. Divide that by the product of the denominators, 15. So that gives us 19 over 15. But we're not done yet because we have 3 and then 19 over 15. So 19 over 15 is 1 because it has 15 over 15 plus 4 over 15. This being 1. So it's 3 plus 1 plus 4 fifteenths. So that's 4 and 4 fifteenths. So you get the same answer, choice C. Question 2. Uh, this whole thing is equivalent to what? So the first thing we do is we combine all the numbers together. Um, so really, these multiplications are no different than the multiplication that exists between 4 and x to the third. So there's no real preference uh, according to PEMDAS, right? P-E-M-D-A-S. So we multiply the numbers first. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. Then we combine all the x uh, together. So we have x to the third, x to the first, and x to the first. So the idea here is to add the exponents, and we would get x to the fifth. Then we do the same thing with y. So we have y squared and y squared, so that's y to the fourth. And this matches up with answer choice J. Mr. Wilk is a high school math teacher whose salary is $33,660 for the school year, which has 180 days. In Mr. Wilk's school district, substitute teachers are paid $85 per day. If Mr. Wilk takes a day off without pay and a substitute teacher is paid to teach his classes, how much less does the school district pay in salary by paying a substitute teacher instead of Mr. Wilk for that day? Okay, so we want to see how much Mr. Wilk makes each day. So he makes $33,660 in 180 days. We can then combine these numbers together to get how many dollars per day he makes. Okay, so let's grab our calculator. <clears throat> we'll go 33,660 by 180, and that gives 187. So he makes $187 per day, okay? And we have to compare that to the substitute teacher who makes $85 per day, okay? 
And the idea here is we're going to subtract these numbers and I get, get $102 per day. That's how much the school is going to save by using a substitute teacher instead of the real teacher. Okay. A student has earned the following scores on four tests. Okay. What score must a student earn on the fifth and final test to have an average of 80? Well, this is an average question, so we always use the same formula. Average equals sum over number, where sum is just adding everything together, and the number is how many things we're adding together. So in this case, we know that the average itself is going to be 80, so we could fill that in. And we know how many items there are. There's going to be five exams. So this is going to be the part that's sort of missing information. But we can fill in some of it, right? 63, 72, 88, 91, and then we just don't know what the last one is. So whenever we don't know something, we usually use a letter for it. This time we're going to use X, okay? Right, so now the idea is we want to solve for X, okay? So to do so, we have to isolate it. And we remember that this is in parentheses, okay? So our first step is to clear the denominator. Namely, we want to get rid of this 5. So there's two ways to think about doing this. One is you can multiply by 5 on both sides. That's kind of the old-fashioned way, right, that you're probably already used to. But for me, my way that I like to think of it is since this 5 is a factor, right, that is to say it's part of a multiplication or division problem, okay, as opposed to a term, which would be part of an addition or subtraction problem. That would be a term. Terms have different rules than factors. But as long as we're dealing with a factor, okay, then we can do the following. We can move it across the equal sign in a diagonal fashion. So it'll end up going to the top of the other side and multiplying with the 80. Okay. Alright, so then at that point we can, whoops, uh, let's see, we can multiply these out and get 400. Okay. I don't know why I erased that. Um, and then we can add all these together in our calculator. Okay. So let's grab the calculator, and we'll do, let's see, uh, 63 plus 72 plus 88 plus 91 plus x. Well, we can't do the x, right? So we'll just return this. It's 314 plus x, okay? So then to get x, we just subtract 314 from both sides. <clears throat> and uh, it looks like it's going to give 86 as a result. And that's choice G. All right. The oxygen saturation of a lake is found by dividing the amount of dissolved oxygen the lake water currently has per liter by the dissolved oxygen capacity per liter. Okay. So let's make a formula out of that. The saturation is equal to um, the amount of dissolved oxygen, dissolved oxygen over uh, the capacity, right? Okay. If the lake currently has 6.4 milligrams of dissolved oxygen, so that number would go in for the dissolved, okay? So that's 6.4. Um, and the dissolved oxygen capacity is 9.5, so that goes to the capacity position. What is the oxygen saturation? So we're looking for this number here. Okay. So we simply, looks like we have to divide these. Uh, oh, and then it says convert that number into a percent. Um, so we'll get a decimal when we do this. And to convert a decimal to a percent, you just have to multiply by 100. So that should be part of our formula as well. Okay. So grab the calculator. Do 6.4 divided by 9.5. And we get 0.67. And then, of course, we multiply that by 100, and that'll give us 67%. Choice B. Rectangular lot that measures 125 feet by 185 feet is completely fenced. What is the length in feet of the fence? So fencing is always have to do with the outer region, which we call perimeter, right? And in this case, perimeter is twice the length plus twice the width. Um, so it's twice 125 plus twice 185. So calculator, uh, 2 times 185 plus 2 
times 125. So we get 620. Now, one quick question here is how come I didn't use parentheses? Well, the calculator is smart enough to know that multiplication comes before addition. So it'll do the multiplication first, it'll do that multiplication first, then it'll do the addition. So we get 620, which is choice H. The expression A times quantity B minus C plus D is equivalent to. All right, so let's analyze this using PEMDAS. All right, so the first thing I notice is that there is, inside of this big bracket here, there's subtraction and there's addition. But using PEMDAS, I notice that addition and subtraction are actually on the same level, which means that I could do them in any order I want, so long as uh, I keep the sign in front. So for example, if I was to do this operation, I could do it sort of, uh, you know, left to right. 3 minus 2 gives me 1, and then 1 plus 1 gives me 2. But alternatively, I can take this 3 and add it with this 1. That'll get me 4. And then I could combine it with this negative 2, and that gets me 2. Same answer. Right? So as long as I keep the sign in front of the number, um, I'll be okay in switching the order. All right? So, um, the idea here is that this parentheses is not really doing anything at all because it's separating subtraction from addition and that is not necessary so we can remove it okay so now we have b minus c plus d and an a outside now this a has to be distributed in to all three pieces so we get a b minus a c plus a d and that looks like choice c right <clears throat> All right, if 6x minus 3 equals negative 5x plus 7, what is x? Right, so we just have to solve for x. I always start with the x terms when I'm combining like terms, so I'll add 5x because I always want to make the x term positive. So instead of swinging the minus 6x this way, which would make it at negative x, I always bring it in a way such that it's positive. Minus 3 is 7. Now I can add 3 to both sides, okay? and I get 11x equals 10 and then I could divide by 11 on both sides or I could think of moving the 11 down because it is a factor right and I get 10 over 11 what two numbers should be placed in the blanks below so that the difference between the consecutive numbers is the same okay so I have to do one two three jumps and in those three jumps, I have to cover a distance that's equal to the difference of these numbers, which happens to be 21. So I have to cover a distance of 21, uh, sort of, uh, if you want, you call it numbers. I have to cover that many numbers in three jumps. So the question is, how many numbers do I go per jump? So I can combine these to get seven, and that's seven numbers per jump, okay? So that means I need to move the thing by 7. So I add 7 and I get 20. I add another 7 and I get 27. And then another 7 will get me to 34. So this is choice B. If x is a real number such that x to the third is 729, then x squared plus radical x is what? Okay. Um, so we'd like to figure this out. And there's a way to do it, right? To get rid of this exponent, we have to raise it to the reciprocal power, okay? We do that on both sides. This cancels out. And then we have to do this in our calculator. So we do 729 to the, and use parentheses here, one third. That'll give us nine, okay? Now, real quick, why do we have to use parentheses here? Well, if we, ref if we don't use parentheses, well, let's see what we get, to the one over three. What this is going to do is it's going to raise this number to the first power, returning 729, and then it's going to divide the result by 3, which is not what we want, because it's going to give us basically one-third of 729. We want to raise it to the one-third power, so this needs to be in parentheses, uh, because exponentiation uh, takes precedence. It will evaluate this first, right? PEMDAS, E comes before uh, division, right? So anyway, now that we have x, we can plug back into here and here, right? 
Um, 9 squared plus rad 9, so 9 squared is 81, rad 9 is 3, so we get 84. The volume for a sphere is given. If the radius of a baseball is this, what is the volume to the nearest cubic inch? Okay. So we just have to plug this in for radius, right? So 4 thirds pi, and instead of doing 1 and a third, let's convert this into a improper number. So we do that by multiplying these and then adding this. 1 times 3 is 3, plus 1 is 4. That gets us the numerator, and then the denominator is the same as what it was. If you don't like that method, there's another way. The other way is this 1 is really 3 out of 3, right? And then when you ever have this notation, it's always plus, so that gives you 4 out of 3, okay? So pi, 4 out of 3, cubed. Okay. And so we go to the calculator. Now, there's a slight simplification here, which is that this just can add an extra number on this exponent, right? Because this is to the first power. The rule is we, if we have the same base, different exponents, we add the exponents, multiplying those numbers. So we get 4 thirds. We have four copies of it now multiplied together times pi. So that's not really required, but it makes putting it into the calculator a little bit easier. So let's see how that works. First, I would do 4 divided by 3, get an answer. I would raise that to the fourth, get an answer, and I'd multiply this by pi. Okay, 9.92, which is approximately 10. If you don't like doing it each separately, we can also use parentheses to get it done. So we go parentheses 4 divided by 3, we raise that to the fourth, and then we times by pi. That will also work.